This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Wednesday, April the 3rd, 2019. Today in 1043, King Edward the Confessor was crowned King of England. His story is a fog of intrigue. Edward was the last, for all intents and purposes, of the Danish Saxon kings of England. He died less than a year before the famous Battle of Hastings and the ascent of the Norman Frankish line. And so the records are a mishmash of supporters, haters, clerics, royals, court officials, and after his death, conquerors. We know a handful of things about him, though, for sure. One, he was Danish. Two, he had a legitimate claim to be on the throne. Three, he didn't innovate. He followed the pattern that Knut the Great had set for him. Four, he was a good and effective administrator and a good field warrior. Five, he took his faith very seriously and was very supportive of the church's work. Six, he established Westminster and moved the seat of government there. Seven, he built Westminster Cathedral. And eight, his great error was in not planning for his succession more effectively. Almost immediately after his death in 1066, people began to travel to his tomb and to report miracles. Even the Frankish conquerors seemed to accept that fact, and bishops installed by Edward were left in their posts. It's really impossible to know the depths of Edward's faith and his sanctity, but the breadth of folks venerating his tomb points that way. There were plenty of other English royals buried all over central England who were more popular, but none of them have gotten the genuine attention that Edward the Confessor has. And so I'm inclined not to agree with the people who removed him from the liturgical calendar in 1968. His feast is October 13th, the same day as the miracle of the sun at Fatima. And he is the patron of troubled marriages and of Brits, generally speaking. Today in 1888, on the other side of town in the Whitechapel district of the East End of London, in the early hours of that Tuesday morning, following the Easter Monday bank holiday, Emma Elizabeth Smith was attacked in the corner of Osborne and Brick Lane. She survived long enough to report the crime to the local Bobbies. She would be known to history as the first victim of Jack the Ripper. He remains one of the most fascinating criminals in history, and even today, 130 years later, people are still analyzing and publishing new theories about him. While the murders were horrific, there was a silver lining in that the papers covered not only the murders, but the awful conditions of the slums in which they took place. And within 20 years of Emma Smith's death, the worst of the slums were cleared and rebuilt. Across the pond, today is the birthday in 1926 of astronaut Virgil Gus Grissom. He was a decorated pilot and one of the very few men who were part of Project Mercury, Project Gemini, or Gemini as many of them said it, and Project Apollo. In fact, Grissom was the first commander of Apollo 1, slated to launch in 1967. It was in pre-launch testing that on January the 7th, 1967, where Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee were on the ground at Cape Canaveral that a spark in the electrical system combined with flammable nylon fabric and an almost pure oxygen environment caused a sudden fire. Emergency crews were literally standing by, but the hatch couldn't be opened due to design flaws, and so the three-man crew of Apollo the I all died on the tarmac that day. Grissom was a rare man and a pioneer of space travel. Finally, today is the feast day of three virgin sisters who were martyred in 304 A.D. Saints Agape, Chionia, and Irene are the subjects of the medieval Latin drama The Dulcitas, written by Ratzvitha of Gandersheim, the first known female playwright. They died because they refused to eat food sacrificed to the Roman gods and so were martyred today. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.